Um, all right, well, thanks for coming tonight. Um, uh, my name is Doug Haney, I'm with Corgan. Uh, we're working with the district over the last two years on the bond planning and uh, the first phase of projects, and now we're in the second phase of projects. I've got Mark Trance over there. Uh, he's been working on a lot of the phase one projects, and he's going to be working on this project uh, uh, as well, the Walnut Springs relocation and Dripping Springs Middle School renovation. Um, thanks for coming tonight. Um, you know, we uh, originally kind of had community meetings and a lot of kind of information gathering and feedback back in the program. The first couple of months we spent programming uh, the project and over the last six or seven weeks we've actually moved into schematic design and we've got a couple of schemes for you guys to kind of look at, kind of see where we are and to get some feedback and, and some input on and, and so we really appreciate your time tonight. I know that there's a lot of other stuff going on that, that everyone can be doing, so we really appreciate y'all's y'all's input. It really helps us kind of get to hopefully where we need to go for uh, the students and the teachers. So uh, to kind of remind everybody kind of what the scope is, we're obviously relocating this school, Walnut Springs Elementary School, uh, over to the Dripping Springs Middle School site. Um, the building is going to accommodate about 850 students. Um, while we're doing that, that's obviously going to necessitate some parking and traffic for parent pickup and drop off, bus pickup and drop off, and things like that. Uh, that's a big part of the design as well, so we'll be kind of working through that, and we've been looking at doing that as well. Um, where, where kind of a lot of the construction could happen and potentially will happen, uh, that's where the existing wastewater treatment plant is, which is big enough for the existing middle school, but it wouldn't be big enough for the added square footage of the new elementary school. So uh, we'll be taking that away and kind of connecting into an adjacent development property uh, to kind of take care of those sanitary needs. So that's part of this project as well. Uh, and then the third part of the project is, is actually going into the middle school and doing a number of assessment items uh, to kind of fix some of the infrastructure, mechanical, electrical, plumbing kind of things within the building, uh, but also kind of provide some areas and kind of specific renovations for collaboration and special ed uh, spaces and things like that. So there'll actually be some improvements from a renovation standpoint there in the middle school as well. The timeline that we're working with is again, we started earlier this year, we spent about two months programming and schematic design in the end is gonna be about seven or eight weeks as well. We'll be finishing up, kind of moving through what we call design development, where we get kind of a lot of our consultants involved uh, to kind of take it from a floor plan and a building mass to an actual building that actually works and things like that. So we'll get structural and MEP technology and civil and kind of all those uh, groups involved. Uh, we'll be finished with that process late September, early October, and then we'll be finishing the documents in January. And at that point, we'll put it out for bidding. We've got a construction manager now on board, so they're going to be involved not only kind of in the bidding process later on, but also to kind of help give us kind of feedback while we're doing the design and documentation. Uh, they'll bid it out kind of February, have information back March. We'll be taking that to the board for their kind of review. And if everything kind of looks good, then we can kind of move forward with construction in April of 2020. And then we've got about 14 months for construction building the new part of the construction would be kind of built finished about May 2021 to give furniture and kitchen and kind of all the, the the district kind of infrastructure kind of come in and get the building ready for teachers and students and then the renovation portions of the middle school would be done over that summer we obviously kind of want to limit the amount of construction inside the building that takes place during the school year so that that type of construction would be kind of extended into to June and July and would be ready for uh, August of 2021. So the overall project would be finished in August of 2021, and the kids and teachers would be able to move in. And this is just a little bit more of uh, kind of the timeline and things like that. But you can kind of see May 2021 for a new construction complete, and July 2021 for the renovation construction complete. So, um, once we were finished with the programming, which again, to kind of remind everybody, we went to the teachers, we went to you guys, the community, we went to a lot of different groups, we had kind of an online survey, but we kind of 
we went and, exist and visited the existing building, we gathered that documentation, we did kind of a lot of infrastructure kind of look and things like that. We gathered all that information and that basically gives us kind of all this stuff to kind of sift through before we even start design because the more we kind of know right at that outset, the better we can kind of start moving in the right direction once we actually start designing. So we did that for the first two months and that's the compile review program information. And at the beginning of June, uh, we kind of set a design committee of, of district personnel to kind of come in so that us as a design team, Corgan as a design team, we could kind of work on different schemes and then take it to that design review committee, get good feedback and, and kind of narrow down kind of the, the designs that we were looking at. We've had three of those meetings. The, the third one was earlier today. Um, the first one, was after about the first three weeks and that meeting we're really looking at as many different options as possible. We want to look at at kind of where the building can go on site. There's seven or eight different places the building can go on site. We want to look at one and two story schemes. We want to look at how the, the new construction connects to the existing construction. Does it, does it connect and is there kind of uh, elementary school programming in the existing building, does it connect but it's kind of the two things are a little bit different or is it kind of not connect but there's kind of an outdoor connection, things like that. So we kind of look at all those different schemes and really what we're trying to do is generate discussion. You know, what, what works, what doesn't work, what comparing and contrasting the, the different schemes and things like that. We narrowed that down to about four schemes, went back and worked on it for a few weeks, came back with the review meeting number two, and now we looked at six or seven schemes, or different versions of those four schemes, and kind of did the same thing. You're comparing and contrasting, you're, you're saying I like this element, or I like this scheme, but I like these elements from these other schemes, and you're kind of piecing that together into something that, again, gets us a little bit closer and closer to uh, a final design. And then today we looked at two versions of two different schemes and we got good feedback on those two and those two would be the ones that we kind of look at today and, and we want to kind of get some of y'all's feedback on what y'all think of kind of where we are right now. So we're going to take that information that we're going to get from you, we're going to take the information that we got earlier today from the design review committee. We presented it to the board last night. Um, We've got a survey going out with four or five questions to kind of get some feedback from that standpoint for, for community members that can't be here tonight. Uh, and then like I said, we're going to get our construction manager to kind of also take a look at it from a budgeting standpoint to see if there a difference in scheme of cost and things like that to kind of make sure that we're meeting those kind of uh, financial requirements. Uh, and then once we kind of get all that, you know, there will probably be a direction kind of one path or another and at that point we'll take that scheme and then we'll move into that design development. And then we'll kind of repeat the process where we'll come back two more times to that design review committee as we get kind of taking it from a plan to an actual building. And then we'll do this again at the end of design development. We'll come back with something that's kind of 90, 95% done and y'all can kind of give your input and feedback on, on that point as well. So to again kind of familiarize yourself with uh, the overall site, and I'm sorry it probably isn't 100% clear to, to read this with the lighting, but you've got, you've got 290 kind of going east-west across the top of the site. Um, you've got Tiger Lane that kind of spurs off of 290 right there that you access into the middle school right now. You've got uh, Peabody Lane right here leading to this neighborhood down here. The existing uh, middle school has kind of five what I would call fingers that kind of stick down. You've got kind of some east-west corridors. You've got these fingers that kind of stick down to the south. You've got a big open field area right here to the south, and you've also got kind of more um, open area here, but a little bit more trees and things like that. And then here's where kind of the neighborhood starts back here. You've got some district facility offices back here, uh, all the way, you've got some shop buildings kind of over here. The stadium's right here, and then you've got parking and tennis courts kind of up, up over there uh, to the northwest part of the campus. and then. The, the site actually extends down here, and there's kind of a creek down here as well. So that was kind of the site that we were looking at. And so I might have you go back and forth from uh, the site back to this. So this is kind of that first design review meeting that we go over. You can kind of see that we're looking at a lot of different mediums, and 
we're actually sitting down and doing a lot of sketching. And you know, you're looking at you know the, the kind of what I what I say for this first design review meeting is that we're trying to generate discussion. We want to generate discussion so that we can take something and then look at it from different ways and see if that's something that we like or we don't like and things like that. So you can kind of see that that you know we're putting um, we're putting the oh that works for there. Um, <laughs> we're putting like this is a scheme where we had we got some some feedback, you know, is there a way to put the building up to the northwest? So we actually kind of did a scheme where we did that. You know, what are the pros and cons? How does it attach to the existing building? How does parking traffic, how do students get from inside the building to a playground or to a play field, kind of things like that. We start looking at different shapes and, and you know, kind of ways of configuring the building. Some of these schemes are two stories, some are one story. Uh, some kind of match up a little bit with kind of the scheme of, of kind of the finger scheme, so I'm kind of going a little bit of a different connection. But again, the idea is to throw out a wide variety of stuff. Some of the stuff we kind of know isn't going to work, but we need to look at that to kind of see why it doesn't work, or maybe there's something that's really cool there that we want to take and move to a different scheme or something like that. But this is why we look at 10 or 11 or 12 different schemes to kind of go through and figure out what we like and what we don't like. None of this is a building yet, none of it's even a floor plan, it's really a lot of diagrams of kind of how things are connecting and how things are relating to each other. And the review team did just a fantastic idea of really giving us great feedback. Some of it was pretty harsh feedback, which is what we like. Uh, we, don't, we don't get our feelings hurt or anything like that. So, um, but we had about a four hour meeting kind of where we went through all these things. And what we kind of came out with is that we wanted about four or five schemes, you know, that seem to make sense to kind of, hey, this seems to be moving in the right direction, let's develop that further. And so that's what we did. We took those schemes and we developed them further. These were schemes that seemed to meet, you know, both the functional kind of needs of what needs to go on inside the building educationally. Uh, they seem to kind of have a relationship to the existing middle school that from a site and from a campus situation seemed to work. Um, and they seem, you know, that they could potentially kind of turn into kind of an interesting building that would kind of fit on that campus and kind of meet kind of the needs of, of what the teachers and the community wanted from an overall kind of how does the building look and feel on the campus and things like that. So you can kind of see, you start seeing a little bit more uniformity with kind of how we're working with our kind of design tools and sketching and computer stuff and things like that. At this point, we really started looking at kind of more of the functional needs on the site, like bus traffic and parent pick up and drop off, how that works with the adjacent rows and things like that. So we, you know, because we're a little bit more detailed with what we're going to do, we kind of start looking at a little bit more of those functional things from a site standpoint. Um, and again, this was like a three and a half meeting, lots of great feedback, lots of, you know, kind of this works, this doesn't, you know, I like this, but this scheme is better, can you move this over here, and kind of things like that. I kind of call it kind of the Frankenstein design kind of process, you're kind of picking and pulling and kind of putting it all together into something that kind of works. And it, you know, it really kind of gets us, you know, I think kind of, again, headed down uh, that funnel to something that, that really works specifically for you guys. So, that's where we kind of had our meeting earlier today. From that second meeting, we picked two schemes that we like. And then what we do internally is that we try to do two versions of that scheme. So the overall kind of scheme has certain elements, but then we want to look at it in a little bit of a different way, kind of see, because there's no one right solution to do these. There's 50 different ways that you can design this building. It's trying to focus on what's the right solution for the teachers and for the students and for this community, and that's what we're trying to get to. So kind of looking at, at different versions of a scheme to see what works and what doesn't work uh, it seems to, to to work really well. So, um, before I get into this, any questions on process or kind of how we got to where we are today and what we're about to talk about today? I had a couple. Sure. Um, so you said community input survey. Who's the community that you're surveying and how are you contacting them? For instance, I'm a parent. My kid's not in school yet, but by the time this opens, we'll be in one of the first three classes to go through. But like, I've never been consulted. I know several other young parents in my neighborhood have never been consulted. So I wonder how the district is, including all community members in a process that we haven't been contacted yet, or even received notice of this meeting um, in any way or form from DSISD. So, so what does that look like? And 
I don't know whether Dale, you want to. I'm happy to address that. So for this meeting, for instance, we did send something to our local weekly papers, and in fact, we have a reporter from the News Dispatch attended. And we also put things on our website that you can subscribe for e alerts to. Okay. Anybody can. I'll be happy to show you okay. how to do yep. that. And that doesn't, that can be any community member. But it is challenging to reach folks that we don't have an immediate contact to. Oh, Mr. Pacheco from the News News is here too. So um, so I'd say our, our local weekly papers and the e alerts. Place. I saw and we did put it on social media as well. Oh, we was it on your Facebook? Facebook and Twitter. Okay. And just do the Instagram too, Alan? No. Um, so those are the best ways to do that. Those okay. e-alerts are really helpful. And then, okay. um, you Where's can, that on the website? Yeah, it basically says whenever we put something on the front page news, like you get an email that says okay. something new has been put on this website. And you can go see what it is. But we would always put these types of meetings on there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So um, the two schemes that we have are very different schemes, which is a great thing. Um, you now what we want to do is we want to give you guys options so that, that you know, there's, again, there's no one way to solve this. And if we can kind of get to a point where we're down to a couple of different ways, but they're very different, that really kind of promotes a lot of discussion about what works best for this particular site and for the community that, that's involved. So um, what we're looking at here, and I'll take it from a site plan and I'll move down to the actual floor plan in general. Uh, one of the first things that we have to solve is how to get kids to and from uh, the school in the morning and the afternoon. And, and um, you know, right off the bat, uh, we know that, that you know, just from a neighborhood standpoint here, we wanted to really minimize the traffic for the, the Peabody residents over here. They already kind of sometimes deal with some heavy traffic over there. And so we wanted to make sure that we uh, didn't increase kind of that traffic. And so the hope was is that we would be able to, from the north, kind of get get cars and buses kind of into and off the, the site. And I think you know, we've got a couple of different ways we're doing that, and we're still kind of looking and investigating a little bit more. We've, we've got kind of a traffic study that we're, we're doing, and, and we're going to get, we're getting input from text dots from, from some other people and things like that. So we're kind of doing, uh, continuing to do kind of research on what works and, and what seems to be kind of the best path to move forward with. But this particular scheme is that we're going to have some controls on the entry kind of up uh, to the northeast of the site to where you're going to have to kind of enter into the site from the west. So, you know, you kind of, you're coming from 290, you kind of come over here to the stoplight over here and kind of come back here. And then again, the object is to have lots of stack space so that you can kind of pull that traffic off of 290 or off Tiger Lane or off the street and you get that on the site. And so this is kind of a scheme where you can see there's a pretty substantial amount of stack space, even if you have 50, 60, 70 cars kind of waiting to pick up or drop off, you know, you've pulled those off onto your site so that you're not kind of harming traffic or, or creating congestion as much as possible. You have kind of a, a drop off kind of right here in front of the school and they would kind of loop back around and then exit back on and be able to get back on to 290 from that standpoint. From a bus standpoint, the middle school busing kind of comes in over here and picks up right here. We kind of continue that trend, but the elementary school buses would kind of come over here and pick up the schools back here and then exit back out on Tiger Lane in 290. So uh, we think that that kind of solution kind of, again, it, it, it kind of spreads things out. You've got four different kind of entries for <coughs> middle school and elementary school bus parking and parent um, uh, pick up and drop off. And you've been able to kind of keep uh, the Peabody uh, lane a little bit open so that we're not adding traffic there. From a site standpoint, one of the really big issues that came up in the programming that we did for both the elementary school and the middle school is that connection from inside to outside. And, and so we knew right off the bat, in, in the design of this building, we're not just designing the building, we're also designing kind of the exterior spaces between the two buildings, and also kind of making sure that we provide as much easy access to the outdoor areas as well. Those educational opportunities are, are just as important as kind of the internal educational opportunities. So, when we were first looking at our, our location of where we were going to put the building on the site, again, we probably had it in six or seven different locations. We had it up there, we had it right here, we had it down here, we had it over here, we had it right here, we had it over here. And what really kind of came out of all this is, from a middle school standpoint, we really wanted to leave this as much open as possible. And the discussions with them, one of the things that really became important, and their main concern was, there's a lot of things that work really well here, and you know we want to make sure that we're not doing anything with 
the new building or kind of how the site's going to be reconfigured that would take away from the really good things that, that, that we enjoy and that we like and the students uh, <coughs> kind of really work with the students. So, you know, this became a real priority is trying to leave this as open as possible and kind of allow kind of those kids to come out of the gymnasiums and things like that to have access to the track and the field and also to have access to these fields down here. So I think in this game we're, we were able, able to do that. Um, and then from an elementary standpoint, the desire was, you know, we've got different age kids and things like that. We want to make sure that we have an outdoor area that's specifically ours. There are certainly opportunities to share some outdoor spaces with the middle school if that's something that the teachers and kind of in both levels want to do and we'll kind of create some opportunities kind of between the two schools. But we need an outdoor space for playground and for track and for field that's specifically uh, kind of set out for the elementary school. And so that's kind of this area down here where we're able to kind of put a full-size track that they've got uh, now and kind of we'll be able to duplicate that. You know, we've talked about some different ways of doing that. Is it through the trees or is it kind of over here? But the idea is that we've got outdoor space for elementary school, including kind of some playground areas, and we've got outdoor space specifically for the middle schools. And then from a site standpoint, again, you you know, the existing building is full of these little courtyards, and there's a lot of different things kind of throughout that take place in those courtyards. Some of them are educational, some of them like outside of the cafeteria where recess happens and kind of things like that. And so we're kind of creating some of those areas too. And so we're going to be looking at opportunities kind of in this scheme to kind of create some of those kind of neat things that kind of go on right adjacent to the school. You know, we talked about maybe some areas where middle school and elementary school collaborate outside. And we kind of looked at this maybe area right here. We could do like an amphitheater or kind of something like that to where there'd be some opportunities to get out there and do some you know, kind of concerts or plays or, or kind of whatever you might want to do out there. Uh, so we kind of like how this worked with it starts mirroring kind of what's going on in the existing, uh, in the existing school. Um, so this scheme in particular, it's a two-story scheme. Uh, you've got two stories right here. You've got an in-between two-story area right there, a two-story area right here, and then you get kind of to your gym and cafeteria. These are one story, but they're kind of double height spaces. Um, Another thing that we kind of talked about from a site standpoint is, you know, kind of not getting right next to the neighborhood and, you know, building something kind of right back or tearing down a lot of these trees. So, you know, the hope is that back here we feel to leave as many trees as possible and even back into here trying to leave as many trees as possible and, and trying to push the building as far away from, from the, this neighborhood area down here. So that's kind of that site. So, moving into the floor plan, again, it's a two-story scheme, so this is the first story right here, second story right here, and I'll start on the second floor, and then I'll kind of move downstairs. Uh, the second floor is kind of a basic H floor plan. Um, there are different ways of kind of doing grade levels, and this kind of takes a neighborhood or a pod uh, kind of concept, and you look at this being fifth grade, fourth grade, third grade, second grade, and each kind of pod or concept would have six classrooms, a resource, and either a speech or an education kind of right here. You have bathrooms kind of shared uh, from both of these areas. You kind of break out this, and this is kind of boxy right now, but it wouldn't be boxy when it's all said and done. And you kind of create some collaboration areas similar to a little bit what they did over at Sycamore. And, and you could actually kind of have some fun with that to where maybe each grade level was a little bit different. You kind of configure each grade level uh, to have a little bit of uniqueness, things like that. Um, Connecting the two, the, the two kind of classroom wings would be this kind of two-story uh, CLNI and kind of learning stair that would kind of be moving right here. And that could be, and kind of the way that we've imagined that would be kind of on different levels. You'd have, you'd have a, obviously a main stair where kids and teachers could move up and down, but it would also kind of be a learning stair next to it, which is kind of a bigger place where kids can kind of go and get in small groups and, and do research or kind of projects and things like that. And then you have kind of other kind of breakout areas, not just over here, but maybe even on the second floor above the, the CLNI. So it's not just kind of a 2D space, it kind of becomes a 3D space where you have different things going on at different levels. And <coughs> one of the things that we're always trying to do, especially in elementary school, is kind of to give kids kind of a sense of wonder and a sense of, you know, wow, this is really cool and something that they can kind of go home after their first day of school and say, oh my gosh, there's these really cool things in the CLNI or in my, my specific grade pod or something like that that kind of 
makes it kind of a little bit of theirs. And so, you know, I think there's an opportunity there to do something really neat kind of with this big open space right here. Um, this first floor right here, right adjacent to the CLNI, uh, you have kind of, again, continuing what's going on upstairs, uh, but you have first grade and uh, uh, kindergarten right here with kind of toilets kind of involved in each of the, in each of the classrooms. And then there'd be a connection piece that connects over to the B-wing of, uh, uh, of the existing middle school. And in there, we put things like maybe gifted and talented, maybe the STEAM, uh, science room, and then we've kind of talked about this maybe lounge area that could be a, a place for middle school kids. If, if you had a group of like seventh grade kids that were going to read to a class or something like that, you can kind of pull those into kind of this lounge, kind of more of a casual, comfortable area that could, again, you can kind of do some really neat things in there, and they could read to those kids in that space. They could, they could obviously go to their classroom, but they could also have a space that kind of was was built specifically for that middle school and elementary school kind of interaction. And so you have that connection there, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a connection that there's a little bit of a, it's not just a big open space where you can go from point A to point B. There's, there's kind of a, a, a knuckle there that you have to kind of move through and uh, things like that. Um, as you head to the west, again, you get to what we call kind of the noisy block. Uh, you've got the cafeteria in the kitchen here. You've got the gymnasium down here to the south, kind of with access to the outdoor areas down here. And then you've got music, and, or you've got music, which has access to the stage. You've got art, which has access to the outside. Uh, and then you've got kind of a pre-gym that kind of helps them kind of control how kids kind of go through the gym area. So all those noisy activities are kind of in their own block so that if they get crazy and loud there, it doesn't kind of interfere with a lot of uh, the stuff going on in the classroom. When we go to the other side, towards the east, towards the front of the building, uh, we'll kind of pop out do, and do something kind of architecturally here. But you, if you remember, we've got uh, the drive pick up and drop off coming down here. They'd be able to kind of go through a front entry here, which would be similar to, to what you guys kind of have out here on the other side of this wall. Uh, you've got admin uh, to the <coughs> north here with kind of all its offices and workrooms and kind of things like that. And then to the south here, you've got your pre-K, um, uh, your, your FA uh, classrooms, and your behavior unit kind of right here, your motor lab right here. Um, and then they've got kind of a, a separate entry right here if they kind of need to get in and out. Um, and, and that kind of creates those three different wings. If you go back to the site plan, you know, kind of architect, nope, 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 nope. Okay, yeah. Um, if you kind of look, I mean, we've kind of continued architecturally kind of that finger scheme. We've just kind of extended the fingers here and then just like the existing building has these east-west connectors, that's kind of what we did here. So the idea here is that we were really going to try to really fit into the campus and kind of really kind of match the building uh, as much as possible with kind of how it's laid out on, on the site. And then if we go to the little axon. We haven't really got a lot into the architecture yet, but you can kind of see how this kind of works to where you've got these fingers right here in the existing building, and then here's where that connection piece is, uh, and then here's the east-west access, here's the gym, the cafeteria back here, the two-story, uh, you know, fifth and fourth upstairs, and kindergarten first downstairs, and then here's the administration, um, and then upstairs would be second and third, and kind of how you enter the building right this is a little. This is a different version of the scheme, but you know this would kind of continue on straight, things like that. So that's scheme one. Thoughts? From a security standpoint, I see four entrances at least to that building where someone that wanted to do harm to those kids could get in there. Why not have interior stairs? which would eliminate exterior entrances to the building. So they would be interior stairs. Um, we have to have them kind of at the end because there are fire safety regulations <coughs> to where, you know, I can't have more than a 20 foot space at the end of a corridor without having a second way out. So you can point to anywhere on, I'll just go to the second floor. You can point to anywhere on the second floor where I have to be able to get out of the building in two ways. If there's a fire there, how do you get out? Or if there's a fire there, how do you get out? or or you know, stuff like that. So when we're laying stuff out, we have to make sure that we can egress the building in two ways, and there's a certain distance requirement there that we have to meet also. 
these would be interior stairs. These, we have to have exits to get out of the building for fire. Really in the daytime, even the front would be locked. Every one of these points where theoretically you could get them, those would always be locked during the day. You come out to the playground, you're having to have a badge trying to get back in. So every point during the day, everything would be locked. At the beginning of school and at the end of school, you may open this up, and let's say your buses kind of drop off over here. You could open up, you know, into your cafeteria or into your gym or however you want to kind of load those bus kids and get them into the building. So you can unlock those during that time, but the minute that school starts, those get locked down again. So none of these areas would ever be open. You could not walk in as a parent or just someone off the street and get anywhere into this building. But we do have to have those exits to get people out for fire safety. So even though they're on the outside of the building, they're still interior to the building. There would be kind of a vestibule here where you'd have a set of double doors there, and then you'd have another <coughs> set of double doors out there. And there's an energy code requirement that we do that for also. One of the, one of the critiques that we got from, um, from the Sycamore project is, if you look over there, they kind of have a pod scheme too, and they've got a stair at the end of theirs that's kind of on the outside of those pods. And they like the pods and they like how all that's working, but the one request that they had was there was an acoustic kind of bleed from that first to the second floor, from the second to the first floor. And just if you had kind of some type of birthday party or some kind of something going on downstairs, which was a little bit noisy, and upstairs they were having something where they were doing something quiet, all that noise would just kind of flow upstairs and, and kind of create a ruckus up there and things like that. So, so we have that also, but it's going to be separated. There would be the stairs and have an enclosure so that you wouldn't have that lead up and down stairs. So the connection between the elementary and the middle school is there at the kinder wing? Yes. That's where you have the majority of your traffic going? So the idea way. is that your fifth and fourth grade, which potentially might get more of that traffic, mm -hmm. they would be able to go straight down this set of stairs and out here. What we usually try to do is we try to keep kids from going, and that's kind of one of the nice things about a neighborhood scheme is that there's not a, you can't take it away 100%, but what you do is you try to, you know, your fifth grader is going through the first grade wing, or your kindergartners have to go through the fourth grade wing. And so that's the idea is here, is that you have a vertical circulation here, so some of the older kids upstairs can kind of go down right there, and they wouldn't have to go through that kindergarten wing. Well, that was anyway. So on the first floor, would there be no connection? Would the kinder hall stop right there? Or would no, it, 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 it certainly would. I just there would a be a connection there because there might be times where you'd have eighth grade coming to read to a kindergarten class or coming down to read to a first grade class or something like that. So we'd still have a connection there. But again, you'd have doors and things like that. It's not like you could kind of wander through like that. So we want to provide those opportunities, but we also kind of want to hopefully provide the majority of time a second means of access to where you don't have to go through those pods. My other concern that came to mind was you mentioned FA up in the very front of the building yes. by the front door. Yeah. And right next to pre-K. Yeah. <laughs> I have a kiddo that was in FA here for many years. He was a loud kiddo. I know lots of other loud kiddos in FA. They're going to traumatize those poor pre-Kers. I mean. And that, that that's something that you know and and you or know. Any elopement. Or any like, elopement. Yeah. Or through the running. front door. Yes. Yeah. The front yeah. of the building is the busiest. It's where we celebrate lots of things. And some of those kids need it very quiet. Right. And, 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 you know, it, the feedback that we got from the teachers were that, you know, those, those kids can't get loud. We need to make sure that they have access to the front, to the administration, but they also need a little bit of acoustic separation and sometimes even a little bit of visual separation. So, so this, you know, I want to say the floor plan here is probably a 60 to 65 percent floor plan. We're going to meet with the teachers tomorrow to get more input on that. And the design development is really when we kind of get in, into the floor plan a lot more. But we know that this area, you know, these seem to be working. We've got to massage those a little bit, and that's going to work out pretty well. But we know that this is a really complex piece of the building right here that's going to need some more adaptation to make sure that we have those requirements from acoustical separation, things like that, that there's still access to it. And, and making sure that, that kind of those connections and those relationships are the right connections. So this certainly isn't the end all be all, but we know that we've got to get in here and do some more work. So does that mean there's no budging on that pod being moved to the back? 
those two switch? Well, we actually or? did look at we did look at this pod in some other locations, and as we kind of moved out of this central thing right here, the concern was that they're getting a little bit distance from admin, from the front of the building, yeah. and also from pick up and drop off. Sometimes there might be. And I get that it is convenient and easy for them to get in and get straight to their class. Um, sometimes going through a bunch of hallways is difficult, but um, you know, so one of them takes off and they're right there at the front door versus well, a long the, hallway for them to warn. Well, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because that was another thing that, that during the program with the teachers that we talked about a lot is to, you know, is to provide multiple levels of safety, you know, both within the classroom, within kind of a wing, and then even, you know, in certain areas of school, whether it's with the little kids or, or with kids who might kind of run or, or, or go somewhere, is to actually provide something from the outside. So I think the idea here is now, no matter where that particular group kind of ends up, is that we would provide, if there's a door kind of right there or something like that, we would provide some type of either fencing or something. You know, there's a good chance that there would be kind of a playground, some outdoor play area and things like that. So, so for whatever reason, if they got past that first or second level of security, there'd still be another level of security if they got outside to, to make sure that there was time to kind of get and bring them back to the schools. That, that was a, a lot of, we had a lot of those discussions during programming. So we know as we continue to develop, whether it's this scheme or the other scheme, we know that we need to provide, you know, one, two, three, four steps of security so that if they kind of pass those, there's still another barrier kind of right there to yeah. make sure that they're safe. Okay. The three rooms that are in the existing B hall is that new that's just going to be renovation yes, yes in the existing okay so yeah and the, the idea you know when we go back to bond planning even before kind of bond and things like that the idea with this with this is that is that we could build a standalone building with no connection and everything in here but if there were opportunities to kind of bridge into the existing school there would be some cost savings with that and again, trying to provide those opportunities. Are there? We're just kind of yeah. trying to to visualize it right now. So let's just say, like the last four rooms in, in the beat, in, in the current. Yeah, it would probably would turn two on one side, two on the other. Yeah, it would, would probably be, be four to six rooms. So that would there. be that transition yeah. lounge. And, and we think that that transition would kind of be a really neat transition. Again, it's do we have an exact? Do we know what that would look like right now? No, but just creating a space like that, and we think that with the steam and and you know, kind of things like that in the gift and town, those might be two two functions, two educational functions that might that make a lot of sense for them to kind of start bridging over to the middle school. So we thought that was kind of a nice connection piece. Is that um, the door for that? Is that also a locked door? That yeah, so have, like, it's kind of access? similar to, to what you have right now at Walnut Springs, kind of where that addition was built and there's that little open area right there. I think it would kind of be similar to that, that, that it would still be, you know, you have access to the outside, you know, this would be a great place to get out if we do have some outdoor kind of places that, that you could have some collaboration areas, you could bring kids out there like that, but it would definitely be locked during the day, and so you could get outside from either a safety standpoint, you know, fire safety standpoint, uh, but getting back in, you'd need kind of a car to kind of get back in. For the main schematic or the diagram, Yes. One, one problem I have with that is that I know at the CLNI at the middle school, we use access to the Peabody parking lot to get book fare delivered, to get cow cars, cow carts exchanged with the technology department and maintenance. So we get deliveries through the CLNI door there at Peabody a lot. And I don't see any access from that parking lot to that one entrance there on Peabody. Sure. And that Thank you for bringing that up, but but any connection or anything into the existing school, we would obviously, if, you know, even with the work that we would be doing here, we would keep those connections intact. And Is there going to be any parking for the middle school teachers on, up there? Well, and, you know, I think that that's something that the two principals are, I mean, what we're going to provide, and, and again, this park, we know that we have to have a certain number of spaces and things like that, but this is just a configuration to show quantity right now. Okay. We'll get in here and, and as we kind of move into design development, we'll definitely be modifying that to make sure, because there's, there's existing spaces right there. We're not taking away any space. Okay. Now we might be moving spaces here or there or something like that, but the idea is that we're gonna add probably 160 to 220 or so spaces when it's all said and done. So you'll still have areas over here, if middle school park's over here, then we certainly wouldn't want to take that away, but definitely that would be kind of a principal discussion on kind of how that works and things like that. But this may be a big block, it may be, 
you know, one kind of long row, it may be a couple of different parking lots, we don't really know yet, but the thought was is that, is that if we could leave some of that Peabody field open, we know that sometimes it's, it gets used and things like that, so we couldn't keep it all, but if we can keep like a third of it or half of it or something like that, again, that just gives you guys another opportunity to kind of get out there and do stuff outside. But definitely, this, in the end, this won't look like this. It'll, it'll be a little bit more aligned to kind of how teachers and parents and stuff kind of get in and out of the two schools. So the, the Peabody access there, will that be gated off? So, so like this is an exit, this is a, an exit only. So you definitely won't have cars coming in here. Um, we can't tell you that no cars will ever go down here, but the idea is that we wouldn't have a specific path to get into the campus kind of from okay. that, in that area on the bigger scale. But it would be an exit, so, so at the end of school, there'll be traffic exiting there? No, and the idea is that they would go <coughs> all the way back, back there. So, oh, I see where you're getting. So no, the idea is that when parents picked up their kids and kind of headed out, that's not an exit that they would be able to take out. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Sometimes it takes me a little while <laughs> to get the question. So there's only one way in and one way out? On this particular scheme, yes. Again, we've looked at probably four different main schemes that, <coughs> that, that kind of do different things around the campus, and we had, a, we had about a, 30, a good 30 minute talk earlier today about some of those schemes. Uh, we like this because the bus and the parents are, are separated. We're providing two different access points into the campus. And on this particular scheme, we don't have any traffic here. We've got some other schemes where we've got a little bit of traffic either in the morning or if it's buses and not parents where there's maybe only 10 or 12 buses rather than 400 parents or something like that. So for this particular scheme, this seems to work best and we kind of like how that works. My concern with one way in and one way out is we have a large portion, myself included, of parents who we utilize this parking lot over here. We actually park and walk our kids up, or in the afternoon we park and we wait at Tigerd Inn. If you have people trying to come in and go to park to walk their kids in, I just I envision just a cluster of parents who want to drive straight up and park, and right. parents who want to, or not park, but let their kids out of the door, and parents who want to park and walk. So for is that There's not different ways to pick up? Maybe I could be totally incorrect, but is that that route of traffic is currently going through the parking that connects to like the A wing of the middle school, correct? So one of the things that we would do is we'd be modifying the the exit of the middle school. We'd be moving that to the left, so that, again that would be exit only. Um, and so you kind of have uh, bus entry and exit over here, bus exit over here, uh, bus entry and exit over here. You know, middle school kind of front wouldn't change very much, and then you have the elementary. So we have kind of different access points for the for the you know four different things that are accessing the site. Well, yeah, no, I get that, but I think right now, like further, so right now you have the parking south. Right now is yes. the parking further north, like right next to that A wing. And like I said, I, yeah, I mean we're just showing a quantity right now to just kind of show how many that we're showing, but I don't envision this being the layout. I mean, I think that we're going to have parking specific for the middle school that that is, you know, kind of With what's there technology. right now. Again, we don't want to take away what works right now. That's kind of a mantra that we kind of go over is yeah, that we don't take that. away anything from the middle school. And so there could actually be two or three different parking lots kind of here when it's all said and done. We've got to integrate that with the pickup and drop off and getting into and out. But but this definitely will change and we'll make sure kind of it works. Is your concern that there's going to be stock My cars concern. and there's a parking lot so people will yes. park and then there's stock cars and they'll have to travel Basically, my concern yeah, is our main an option for yeah. park and drop off. So, well, you can you get a teacher parking lot with access exclusively on the Peabody and then you eliminate the issue where teachers can get in and out without being able to Well, the feedback that we've gotten with that is that nobody follows that. Is that if we allow that kind of access that parents will come in to that and so use that as a gate thing solve it and be really cost effective. A lot of teachers access it now without having to waste their time to have a doctor's appointment or something right after school. So when we've used gates in the past before on schools like that where you have constant traffic in and out is that it actually creates a secondary traffic jam right there is that if you've got 10, 15, 20 teachers coming within a 10 or 15 minute period, <coughs> it's kind of like getting out of the airport or something. You've got to get there, they do their car, it goes up, one car goes through, it comes down. And you can see it kind of takes two, three, four you times. You program well. those arms to be out there in certain hours too when teachers leave. Well, and, that, and I think that the feedback that we've got is that when you do that, it's not just the teachers that are going to come in there. It'll be parents coming in and dropping off. And kind of do it. I don't know. It just seems like a really 
it seems like teachers' time will be wasted waiting for parents to pick up their kids if there's only one entrance and exit, and they show the same parking lot that the parent pick up. Doug, do you want a pointer? Oh, it's the closest they have to find to a point. Everything's locked up. <laughs> well, and and, I, and, and, and again, I, I, there's definitely options to do that, and I don't think that we're there yet from a design standpoint. We just haven't. We're, we're still kind of locating things on the side. And if there's if there's other opportunities to do that that make sense, that we're not kind of creating a lot more stuff going on here, have parents go in two, three, four different areas, things like that. Those are certainly things that we'll discuss in design development and. And kind of try to come up with something that kind of balances all those things. Okay. I don't know if I've got that solution right now, but but you know a lot of a lot of campuses you do you have kind of a parent area or a visitor area, and then you also have a teacher area and things like that. And if we can kind of do that to where we can make sure that it, you know they're still it's safe and access is still good, things like that, and we're you know, taking care of the neighbors and things like that, we would obviously try to do. Well, I mean, right now the SISD has a busing problem where students are stuck on buses for hours after school so a lot of parents pick up and I don't know like I'm I'm five minutes down the road, my kid's stuck on a bus and peeing his pants versus being able to come pick them up. That's why part of the traffic issues are the way they are at schools is because parents are picking these kids up. Yeah. And there's there's and a lot of so parents that pick up their kids. So do we have numbers on how many parents pick up and whether this is long enough to accommodate them without them part of the exercise and blocking the roads and the clusters? We have looked at those and again that's that's one of the reasons why we're trying to elongate that if we need to kind of have some separation there. We feel like, you know, starting off with as much as possible, then if we need to pair that back, we can always do that. But again, we're probably not to that point yet at Schematic Design to kind of know all those answers yeah. yet. But but just like the building, again, I want to reemphasize the outdoor areas are just as important as the building. We've got to get those right. We look at those outdoor rooms and those outdoor access points and the safety part of it, the circulation part of it, how it impacts the neighbors. Those are all things that there's a constant discussion going on there to try to kind of make sure that we're kind of heading in the right direction. This is a start, mm -hmm. but we obviously have to continue kind of manipulating it and working on it yeah. to make sure that we're kind of meeting all those all those goals. This is probably a separate point, but have you done a study about how many trees will be demolished on this plan versus the next one? And we will be doing that. Right. that. Yeah, you yeah, we've got you know there are zoning regulations and kind of things like that. And again, kind of where the building's located and what we'll be doing with the parking and drive areas that we're trying to minimize the amount. We've got a lot of great feedback from. Uh, the Peabody parents about, you know, just those trees acting as a little bit of a buffer and things like that. We want to make sure that we respect that. And then just, we like trees. I mean, the, you can't, you can build and you can do things, but you can't replace trees. You've got a nice mature tree. We want to make sure that we, as much as possible, kind of keep those nice trees because you can't replace them. Right. A four inch caliper tree is not going to replace a 20 inch caliper tree. It right. takes decades to do that. But that's definitely something that we always look at too. Is trying I wasn't to sure if you had the numbers, numbers yet for comparing these two plans. Yeah, I don't know if we have the exact numbers yet, but I know in just laying out stuff, we've we've got a pretty good, pretty accurate survey, and so kind of how we push things and things like that. We're, I think we're once, once we get a final uh, direction on, uh, on building locations, then we can determine you know, if there's an effect. Both schemes are basically in the same location. I mean, just in looking at multiple areas throughout the site. You know, we kind of figured that this area kind of right here seemed to make the most amount of sense. And that's also kind of one area where there are some trees there, but certainly not as many as kind of as you move back and, and to the side of the site. So I think just the location ended up part of that discussion was we're, we're affecting as, as falling out of trees as possible. Back in 2008 when they did the high school swap, there were some geological issues in that field next to the track. They couldn't build there. And I think they at least what was communicated was it couldn't add any more structure onto the site without creating significant drainage issues. So that, those were both two of the primary reasons they said why they flipped the high school and the middle school was because of the geological structural issues that, that I guess was in the ground there. I guess two separate engineering firms confirmed they couldn't build there. Um, and then there was also all the drainage issues that they did with the water studies. Obviously, we have Atmos 14 with the third more water. So, you know, the, 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 the raised field here does create a little bit of a challenge to kind of build and kind of manipulate that area, but, you know, it, it spoils from when they did the addition. You know, that stuff can be leveled out and modified, and we have a civil engineer on board to kind of make sure that we're doing kind of what we need to do from a, a base and from an underlying standpoint to, to make sure that we're good structurally, whether it's asphalt or building or anything like that. It's not that you can't build there, but sometimes if 
you get into those things where you're doing a little extra excavation, you might end up spending a little bit extra money right there to get the ground and get the subgrade where you want it to be. But in drainage, obviously, with what you guys have experienced over the last kind of couple of months here, we know we've already started kind of taking a look at how we're moving water on the site and kind of things like that. So we know that obviously we've got to get those. This is actually a really good site for drainage in that it's not flat. You know, those, those areas can kind of be pretty difficult to have some slope to it so that we can get water and we can ma manipulate that water. We can get it to where we want to. Um, but, you know, quantity of water and things like that, we've got to watch out for also. So that's something as, again, as we design the outside parts of the building, we'll make sure that we've got the areas close to the building, but also the areas in parking and other play areas and things like that, making sure we're doing what we need to do to get water from point A to where we want it, point B. That's a good question. I had a question about the learning stair. Sure. Go back to the four pictures. So is that all open from like, would that be open from the first floor through the ceiling of the second floor? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I guess my question is like acoustically, it, certainly it could seems be. like it's going to be a lot of sound. So, so there's two different paths here that we can go and we, we, we mentioned them during the meeting today, but we haven't kind of followed up on it. You know, we're seeing a lot more kind of in different projects and different districts where a lot of the library or CLNI kind of spaces are kind of opening up and being kind of not just specifically for library, but for a lot of different activities. And so we're seeing actually a lot of open, kind of what you're saying, where you can certainly open this all up and again, kind of in the 3D space, not just 2D, but you can have mid-level stuff and second-level stuff, and you can have areas kind of poke out over the second floor and things like that. Um, or it can be more of a traditional library where you can kind of close it off, and this becomes kind of a two-story volume that, that kind of has access points from the hallway, and, and kind of this becomes its own little area kind of separated. So the amount of connection between these two, it can be completely open, or it can be two different things, or one side could be open and the other side could be closed. As we kind of move forward, if this is the scheme that we end up going with, you know, you start looking at areas and you specifically focus in on design points, kind of how that looks and how that works. And just like we've started with 11 option, went down to four, and now we're down to two, we'll look at three or four ways of putting together a pod or a neighborhood. We'll look at three or four ways of doing the CLNI. We'll look at three or four ways of doing the entry into the building, kind of things like that. So when we get down to specific parts of the building, we do the same thing. There's no right way to do it. It's just let's look at some different ways and figure out what works best for the students and the teachers and how they kind of want to interact and, and do their education. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important like, to just be mindful of the students who are really sensitive to the acoustics in a building. I mean, there's a lot of kiddos, that, not just special need kiddos, but regular kiddos who it's extremely hard for them to learn and to function in a space that's echoey or where you can hear somebody way down there and what they're doing and they're trying to do their work and focus. It's just and that's such a, you know, it, 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 we've kind of talked back and forth about it, but when we met with those 55 or so teachers during programming, I think more than any other programming set that I've ever done, acoustics were talked about a lot. And partially it's kind of how this building is where you have a lot of sound going up and maybe some of the central functions or noisy functions and things yeah. like that. But, but we did talk about acoustics a lot and we know that that's an important part of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And we know that, you know, there are certain areas of school that typically are a little bit quieter, certain areas that you want to be noisier. You know, that's kind of how a lot of this block kind of got separated and pulled away because we know that no matter what, there's going to be a lot of noise over here. Um, when you get into the neighborhoods and the CLNI, those are some areas sometimes where they are quiet and sometimes they're a little bit loud. And so kind of balancing kind of those two things to where you want to allow spaces to be loud if they need to be, but you also want to protect the areas with the surrounding things like that. So, so I think the thought was is that because we've separated these kind of wings and internalized them, is that you know a space like this, if it did get loud, it's strictly limited to this space, whether it's this space or this space or this space. We don't know yet, but just the idea that if they're loud here, it's not going to impact this classroom right here if they're doing a test or something like that. But then acoustics, I'd say out of probably the 12 or 13 groups that we talked to, probably 
12 or 13 actually talked about acoustics. So it was, a, it was a big topic of conversation we were doing program. Now, if that were to be one large space, there's a hallway going through it. Yeah. Would that be included in that room, or would there be like a so one of or? We've talked about this a lot, too. And one of the really interesting things as, and this kind of goes back to history of kind of how, you know, you look at schools built in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they have a certain style. And then you have kind of 50s and 60s schools have another style. And then from the 70s to the 2000s, you've got another style. And one of the things over the last 8, 10, 12 years that you see more and more is this idea of getting rid of circulation. It, you, you know, circulation is kind of what we call gross square footage, not net square footage. Net square footage is square footage that has a function and you use, and then gross square footage is your walls and your corridors, and you know, they don't have an active use except to get from point A to point B or something to do with the building. But that's one of the reasons how these pods have become so popular over the last kind of decade or so is that is that traditionally where you know you take this room, there's a corridor that goes down there, and that corridor is great, but that's eight eight feet wide by you know 150 feet long. That's a thousand square feet that you use you know eight nine times a day to get from here to there, and it's never used again. To where you go into one of these pods, and suddenly that circulation space becomes net square footage, kind of your collaboration where you're breaking kids out and you're setting furniture out there and it's movable and you kind of move around. And so a little bit of what we're seeing, kind of like the open library, is that, that even taking that to another level where if you did want to open this up, and again, no decision on that yet, but if you did, it's not just a corridor that goes east-west. And one of the things that we've talked internally in this design process is this idea of a streetscape. You you go into some schools and you literally look down a corridor and it's 200 feet long and it's a narrow box, it's 10 feet long by 8 feet wide, it's a straight wall. And you think about a little kid, you know, second grader, trucking down that hallway, there's not a whole lot of visual interest there unless you kind of put stuff up on the walls and things like that. So if you look at this corridor right here, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create rooms in that corridor. And you're trying to kind of do contrast in that corridor where you're, you're going through different spaces. So this entry is kind of a, a big open space and you know natural light and things like that. And then this area, it kind of collapses and it's a little, you know, it's kind of a, a, a dark space. And then you go to a light space and then a dark space and then a light space and a dark space. So you, so you see verticality, it's, it's a low space, it's a high space, it's a natural light space, it's an indoor light space. Um, you know, what goes on kind of here is very different from what goes on here, which is very different from what goes on here, which is very different from what goes on there. And so even if, you know, your, your pre-K kid has to go here to the cafeteria, it's not a 200 foot long corridor they're walking by. They're walking through rooms in that corridor and just kind of creating that indoor streetscape. That's part of kind of giving those kids a sense of wonder rather than, hey, you're going to walk 200 and get some, some of your steps in or something. That. So the idea of something like that is that we want to kind of get rid of just corridors and kind of create either rooms that kids are traveling through or even kind of bleeding kind of function into those corridor spaces so that it's not just being used between classes, it's being used all the time. Yeah, it just occurred to me that um, I can visualize a lot of what you're saying because I've been going through this Tassitas the Exhibit of School Architecture yes. and Jury Panel. And so I've seen 70 oh, different great stuff on there. really amazing yeah. things. But do you do you have access that you could share maybe with the next planning group so that they can see it instead sure. of just visualize? I think it would help yeah. in I you know, and, and you know, just like writers, there's there's no new ideas. You know, we all we all copy, we all create, we all take from other things. And so a big part of what we do architecturally is that we see things that we really like and you see kind of things come in. And so we get inspiration that way and we can certainly bring some of that inspiration so we can kind of show you what an open library looks like or we can kind of show you what inside a collaboration area in a in a pod or a neighborhood looks like or you know, kind of things like that. We can definitely kind of pull some of that stuff and and, and get some visual impact there as well. That's a great idea. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Yeah, and I've seen in the Sycamore pods, and they're really cool. Yeah. yeah. It is definitely, I mean, I subbed over there, and I'm like, 
Hey, that's cool. <laughs> that here, yeah, and I think yeah, a lot so of the, it's it's super cool. A lot of the teachers had, you know, one of the first thing when we were meeting all the teachers, it's like you you built a new school. Let's let's talk about the positives and negatives. What do you like? What do you don't like about the school? And and definitely one of the things they like is they really like those pods and they like being able to kind of break out and have kids, whether it's a couple classrooms or even individually or in small groups. That makes a lot of sense with kind of more project based learning and things like that. Yeah, their concern was acoustics, just being yeah. up and downstairs and things like that. So, um, you well, know, it was cool how the classrooms connected as well, yeah. and they had that little shared space. Because, like with fifth grade, they have partner teachers, and they're you know either in the hallway or meeting, you know, switching back and forth. And there was that little connecting room between the two, yeah. where they could share. And that would be a quieter space for the acoustic or the you know the kids that need quieter that they could share, or the hallway space if they are okay with a little bit more sound. But it gives several shared areas, which is... And, you know, with sound also, you know, you're, there's two types of sound. You, you want to keep sound in or you want to keep sound out, you know, depending on kind of what mm -hmm. space it is and things like that. And there are certain things that we can do with just materials and things like that that absorb more, or even between walls to where you get a little more sound insulation from this room to the next room and things like that. So is that so, something that you would be doing, like, in that the oh, loud yeah. block, like, yeah. where the cap, you know, because you don't want it add more to cafeteria noise. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. But and again, that's, that, you know, we move through design development where we try to get this kind of floor plan from 70 or 75% to 90, 95%. And while we're doing that, you know, we get to the end of design development. And then we get in the construction documentation, that three, four month period where we're just doing the nuts and bolts of the school and finishing up that last 5% of it from a planning standpoint. That's when we start really kind of getting a lot of the detail on acoustics and sound for Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. With that mm -hmm. setup, what's the game plan if we get to a point where one of the grade levels needs a seventh classroom? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked that. Um, so what's not shown here that actually is here is that there are rooms kind of right outside of these. There's a resource uh, room kind of at each of the different grade levels, and then there's either a speech or a um, a focus room or intervention. intervention room, and the idea would be is that if you if you got a little bolt there where you need a, se a seventh section or something like that, you kind of take those rooms and combine them together for that year or two years or some relocate that function elsewhere, and then when that bulge kind of moves through, it can kind of come back and do those two spaces. So like the, the ones that you're pointing out are kind of like flex dark turquoise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, it's okay. like a flex. So we'll, we'll initially plan for it to be a resource or intervention, but if we need to make it a classroom. <laughs> So where, I was thinking those were bathrooms. I can't read. So those, <laughs> I don't know if that's me or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, just, yeah. You know, again, these are these are floor plans, okay. but they're very simplified floor plans to be able to kind of talk and explain right now. And they're certainly not finished floor plans, okay. but the bathrooms, again, are the light turquoise. It'll be right here. And then the idea is that you know this corridor right here, we want this to be lots of glass. So this would be kind of maybe a glass breakout room or something like that, so that you kind of have. You know, I'm a big advocate of light, where you can get light in the building, you always get light in the building. Okay. I like it when you're in a corridor that you can always see light. So if you're here, you can see out here, you can see out here. If you're here, you can see out here, you can even see out there if you want to. So the idea is that no matter where you are in the building, I can't usually get 100%, but I can usually get the 90% that you can always see outdoors somewhere. Okay. So those dark turquoise are like our flex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. No, you might want to. I mean, we probably need to move on just for time. You okay. know, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to get past this, but come back if we need to. Right. Sure. Because uh, yeah. you got, got a whole other. Right. We got a whole other <laughs> scenario <laughs> and <laughs> an hour in. Okay. So let's go to the second scene. All right. So again, what our goal is is that we don't give you two things that are exactly the same. We want you guys to have options. So uh, this game's a little bit different. Um, um, it kind of breaks, you know, that finger grid that we have kind of going down. This kind of connects into the building in a couple of places, but it kind of breaks away from that kind of really gridded north-south uh, finger plan uh, that's out there right now. Uh, from a site standpoint, um, you know, this is, this is a scheme where we're looking at a couple of different ways of moving uh, through the site to where, um, you know, potentially we could have bus traffic on. Uh, Peabody Road to where we kind of pull in here, but then we kind of pull back out here or potentially even pull back out to Peabody. Um, we're looking at a couple of different ways with the parking up here to kind of modify uh, the area getting in so that we get a little bit more stack space. So 
there's a little bit more manipulation from a site standpoint here. Uh, but you can kind of tell the, the building has kind of moved up. It's still fairly in the same place, but it's kind of sliding around uh, the southwest or southeast corner of the school to get a little bit more frontage, kind of to 290 and, <coughs> and uh, to the north. Um, so, uh, but, but again, going back to those outdoor areas, there was, you know, again, going to both schools, there was a really strong focus to kind of have, you know, both easy access to those outdoor spaces and then also to have some of those separation of what's dedicated for elementary school, what's dedicated uh, for middle school. So that we've got kind of this over here, which just basically mirrors what's there right now. And then in this particular scheme, we actually have, and we can do this for the other scheme too, is we actually maybe have the track kind of going through the trees, which might be kind of an interesting difference right there to where it kind of goes through the trees and you've got shade, not shade, things like that. So uh, those are some things that this scheme is kind of looking at right now. Um, the building itself uh, looks to connect in kind of two ways, a direct connection that potentially could use some of the second floor uh, 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 wing A classrooms, and then kind of a an indirect connection uh, kind of into B right here, so there would be a couple of ways to kind of access uh, the middle school in this scheme. And you could certainly come in in this scheme and kind of do some of those same things where that kind of lounge space or something like that, you could have this over in the B area, or you can even have that up in the, in the second floor of the A wing up here. Um, this is also a two-story scheme. Um, you've got the entry of the building kind of here to the northeast. Um, you've got classrooms that kind of create kind of the middle part of the, the, this scheme right here, and then those kind of loud areas would be down here to the southwest kind of facing uh, the fields and things like that. Uh, you also have some classrooms that extend only on the second floor that connect into the existing A wing right here. On the first floor, it would actually be open so that you could kind of have a covered area underneath that second floor where you could put kind of an outdoor classroom or something like that. You kind of have this covered area that could be used for different functions outside if you if, if a class wanted to bring a, uh, a teacher wanted to bring a class outside or anything like that. Okay. All right, so first floor, second floor. I'll start with the second floor and move down to the first floor. Um, again, the entry of the building is right here. It's kind of, you have a center kind of rotunda here that kind of acts as your your kind of uh, focal point to kind of move in different directions. I got the point on the side right here. Um, um, so you kind of come up with kind of again some type of open stair uh, that both has a stair component, and maybe also kind of a learning stair. Maybe that learning stair kind of is in different areas or something like that. Again, this is certainly an area that we want to really focus in on and design um, if we kind of move forward this scheme. Uh, you kind of go two ways. Uh, you kind of go uh, a little bit north and west, kind of connect. This is this is A wing right here, and we've got fourth grade that kind of extends out here with some collaboration space. Again, this corridor, you kind of look at furnishings and things going on in this corridor, and then you access into uh, the second floor A wing right there, where you have fifth grade and you have your your steam lab here. You have your classrooms and resource room. Kind of that pod. Each of these is kind of its own pod, but in a little bit of a different shape. And then as you move into kind of the heart of the building right here, uh, you've got second and third grade here with kind of a collective uh, collaboration area here that's kind of has a, an area that kind of you can get natural light down to the first floor and kind of things like that. And then moving to the first floor, kind of going from the back to the front. Um, again, you've got kind of your noisy spaces kind of combined together right here. You've got your cafeteria, kitchen. Uh, you've got your PE, your music, your art, and your, your PE prep gym kind of over here. Uh, and then this first floor is basically exactly kind of what's on the second floor here. <coughs> you've got um, first grade and kindergarten, and then up here in the front pre-K right here. The collaboration area kind of in the center would kind of mirror maybe the opening, or you'd kind of see some things go up between those uh, two floors right there. You know, maybe part of this is raised, you've got some different flooring material, you've got some, maybe you've got some kind of closed in glass collaboration boxes or something there. You kind of see like a whole lot of stuff kind of going on in here that, you know, when you're kind of looking through, you want to kind of have this neat terminus point right here. So kind of what goes on right here becomes really important so that you can almost see potentially all the way through the building 
uh, right there, but you want to make sure that anything that you do in here doesn't kind of block that 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 path of uh, view through this kind of uh, big open space right here. As you move toward the front, again, you've got kind of your big kind of uh, point where you kind of either go up or you go that way, that way, that way, entry kind of right here. So that becomes kind of the heart of your school right here. You've got your seal and eye off of that, which also kind of has access to this under the second floor kind of covered area right here and also access out into this kind of protected courtyard. On the other side, you've got admin and teacher support. Uh, and then you've got breakout, or you've got uh, your behavior unit and your FA unit right here, and some other kind of support areas right there. And then here's kind of the entry of your building right here. And then from, okay. And then this is kind of how that would look. So this would be the front of the building right here. This is a little bit of a different scheme. This is kind of scooted over to the right here. So but this rotunda is actually kind of in line with that area right there. But the idea is that you kind of have this big central point that would kind of pop up and have natural light. And we kind of came up with this, you know, over at Sycamore, they've got that, you know, the seal and I, they've got that neat rotunda that kind of sticks up there. So the idea is that, you know, is there a way that we can kind of mirror and kind of take that into this new project? And so you can kind of see kind of almost a thematic kind of connection from elementary school to elementary school. Um, and this is that big, you know, where you've got the, the, the first and second floor. Uh, classrooms, the back area back there, kind of your noisy kind of double volume space is right there. And then right here you can kind of see that second, <laughs> you can see that second floor connection right here with the first floor kind of open underneath here and that's where it kind of accesses up to uh, the second floor of anything right there. Now, uh, this one does use Peabody, this plan? A little bit more and again, you know, we've Go back to the side. So this one, we're still working on a couple of different areas, and, and again, all these paths from the, you know from your parent or your bus, we can kind of put them on any scheme that we want. Just we're we're looking for conversation, we're looking for different versions, and kind of what are the pros and cons of each version. So this one does have buses enter here, and like you said, we could either turn those buses back around and exit them here, which there are some pros and cons to that. You're definitely getting 10 to 12 buses, you know, both entering and potentially leaving. Um, or we could exit those buses out kind of to the western side of the site. You know, there are some, you know, these kids are going to be leaving a little bit earlier, so there's a little bit of concern that, you know, there might be kids going back and forth here, these buses coming in. So, you know, there's some things that we're still looking at there, but this one does have some bus traffic kind of going And then there's here. another access up there. Yeah, it's not there. Oh, it's something we were talking about that, so um, we went away from yeah. So the bus traffic would be delivery and pickup? Yes. Right. So you'd have those 10 or 12 buses coming in in the morning, and you'd have those potentially, like I said, you, we could either exit them out to the west, or we could have them kind of come out there. And the idea is that it's probably a lot easier to deal with, you know, 10 to 12 buses, you know, within like a five or 10 minute period versus, you know, 250 parents in their cars. and. You know, you're really sitting there waiting 30 minutes to kind of get out there. So even though it does add a little bit of traffic there, we like the bus traffic better than the parent traffic because it's a little bit more controlled from a district standpoint. Their drivers are there. They're not going to be doing things that they're not supposed to and things like that. And, you know, so does, it, that, sorry. Oh, oh. does that still leave one entrance and exit for yes. Um, yes. drop-off? Yeah. Or so so the, the difficulty with, and I'll just kind of go over some overall site stuff, the difficulty, you know, we really looked at a couple of schemes where we were bringing parent traffic back here, and, and the, the two concerns uh, that we had were, were the timing of, especially the afternoon stuff, is that if you had parents kind of leaving at, you know, kind of the end of school right here, you still have middle school classes going on. Now, if buses are going there, again, those are district employees, there's some amount of control there, but you get 250 cars driving through the southern portion of the building. I, I mean, you could certainly do it, but you're having to kind of go out there and provide some maybe personnel or some other types of protection to make sure kids are accessing and things like that. Plus, this is kind of how where your buses go, so now you've got cars going by the middle school buses, so there are just some concerns with bringing the parents to the west. So now, we're looking at what do we do if we just keep the parents over here on the east. Well, there's two different ways, you know, both access and egress. We can access to the north, or we can access off of Peabody. 
or, uh, yeah, keep on. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that the potential, if we even open up Peabody, is that we can try to control it, but we also know that parents get frustrated, they're in a hurry, they're going to take whatever shortcut, things like that. Now we've started to kind of lose control a little bit of, of what we're doing here. So, so our concern is, you know, it certainly is going to take some work with TextDot and, you know, having parents make sure that they kind of understand kind of what the role in the system is getting into and off, off the campus. But if we determine it right and have people access from the left and leave to the right, we think that we can kind of get there and that solution probably is better than, you know, somehow 200 cars end up over here on this street and we've lost control of that. So, so that's kind of the process that we went through. We originally had that going to the west and then we backed off from that and we've looked at two or three ways of kind of keeping it over here to the east and this is kind of the best that we've come up. That doesn't mean we're done with it yet. I mean, we're still looking at it. We're still looking at different options, things like that. But I just, from y'all's standpoint, that's kind of the, you know, try one, try two, try three. We're we're kind of on the fifth, sixth version right now, and we're still kind of looking at it, trying to make sure that, that it ends up being the best. Can so. I make the suggestion, sure. and you probably have thought of this, to look at what is happening at DSE, because one of the issues with, with elementary school pickup you not only have people who are coming in and walking up to Tiger Den or Tiger Lair, so you want to have cars that are able to bypass the carpool line. You also have parents <coughs> and other people who are coming in for after school activities or meetings with teachers who don't want to sit in yeah. that. So DSC has more space. They have that same 12 entrance exit, but there are multiple lanes you can bypass. And that's, you know, I think, you know, the other version probably shows that a bit better, but we absolutely know that we can't just have one lane going down here. It could be one lane going down for drop off, but we've got to turn off here to some visitor parking, and maybe we have another turn off to like a staff parking or something like that. So you may get a little congested at the entry or something like that, but once you get there, you're able to kind of turn off whether you're visiting or whether you're a teacher or something like that. So as we kind of continue to develop the parking and that access point, those are definitely things that we want to make sure that if you're just there to, you know, you've got to run in for 15 minutes to have a teacher conference or something like that, we don't want you to have to wait for, you know, 20 minutes in line to just park right there. So, and, and we know that, you know, parking, you know, what you have here, the parking on your drive lane, usually you don't want to do that. You want to separate that parking into a different lot so that you don't get kind of bleed over or, or cars backing out into your into your driveway and things like that. So those are things that we're thinking about. We're definitely kind of continuing to look at that. That's a great point. And that's, that, that we, we definitely will have separation there with whatever scheme is. So for elementary mm -hmm. kids to access green space in this one, they have to cross the road somewhere? So, the bus parking so we have to have, again, this goes back to a fire safety issue. We have to surround the building with some type of vehicular access for fire trucks and things like that. So again, that's probably one of the reasons why I'm leaning towards the buses going out here, because we still have to have a road. Whatever scheme that we do, we have to have this road. It's kind of like the existing road back there right now. It's kind of blocked off. The fire department would have a knock box key where they can kind of access it. You, you don't even, you can do kind of impervious or pervious paver. You, it doesn't have to be asphalt, it doesn't have to be concrete. You can do other things there as long as a fire truck can kind of go over it. But the idea is, is that we do have to have it, but we do want to make it, we do want to make it as limited as possible, certainly during the day. Um, but even if, even if, let's say, buses do kind of go back here, it would be open for 30 minutes in the morning. 30 minutes in the a afternoon, but during the day, you kind of foresee like a lock and gate or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, that's, and then like I said, the fire department, they can kind of get in and get out of thing here too. Um, you know, we've, we've done, you know, where we've got concrete, where we put in like a, you know, kind of running lanes and stuff like that, or kind of other things that the kids can use for outdoor activities and peaking and stuff like that. So there's some, there's some kind of fun things or some, some other things that we can do to kind of make that, minimize the impact of that. So which of these plans, the first one or the other one, or the first one or this one, is easier to expand? Because our district's current plan that they just approved in 2018, the long-term plan that they're spending, I think, $55 million more for the current number of buildings, we'd be looking at like 1,350 students in eight elementaries and 1,450 students in six uh, middle schools, or, or four middle schools. And so if, if we're to stay with that plan that we're wanting, they're wanting to spend $50 million more on what the previous long-term plan was, 
are we able to expand with these plans as they are to reach that capacity that's effectively almost double? For so one of the, school, what the, the current plan one is? of the great things about this site is, is that we know that that middle school is bigger than it, you know, it has some expansion capabilities and, you know, whether we take over four or six classrooms or anything like that, there's, there's still a substantial amount of kind of growth that you could happen in the existing school itself. So let's say that there was a bubble or in between building a new school or something like that. If you needed to add another 100, 150 middle school students and another 100 elementary school students, the existing building is able to kind of handle that, even with kind of potentially taking over four or six classrooms and things like that. So on this particular site, because you've got that middle school that was originally the high school, the expansion there would kind of take place within that school. It would be like 500 or 600 students mm -hmm. the school. It would be about 500 or 600 students that you'd be adding to the schools based upon the current plan. And so if we were to expand these facilities, which plan would allow, or would either of them allow that sort of capacity to be added without yeah, I think either really ensuring your whole idea of flow and, and pods? And so the idea with what we're doing here is that we're still allowing for you know, the middle school to have kind of breakout rooms and collaborative rooms and things like that. And then even above and beyond that, there's still space for them to expand up to 11 or 1150 kids, okay. things like that. Part of that expansion could be elementary school expansion into those spaces as well. So that you're able to add two or 300 kids into the site. You know, it'd be, start getting a little tight after a while. But right. well, I guess architecture on the outside, from, I mean, y'all are the experts. So, so if we were building on structure, or this, if we were building on a standalone site, that would be a little bit more of an issue because we don't have anything to kind of connect into. But we, on this particular site, if we needed to, you know, down the road to add, we could add to either one. But really, the expansion is into the existing middle school, and it would be you could you could you could expand a substantial number of kids, whether they're middle school kids or elementary school kids in that middle school. So. You know, I think compared to the other elementary schools that you have in the district, this this one this one has kind of a built-in way of, of expanding kids and that capacity kind of yeah. moving up and well, down. The middle school, I think, would increase by 600 versus 500 for the elementary. So if they're increasing in size at the same time, I mean, would the elementary bump out in south towards Peabody or would it bump out towards where you have that ball field? For instance, in this map, I'm just trying to visualize space-wise what an additional 500 kids would look like in so far. As yeah, and I don't know that we've looked at kind of projections of adding 1,100 kids to the site. I don't know if that's something that we've, we've looked at yet. If we need to look at that, we could certainly look at that, but that's probably a little bit beyond kind of our understanding of what we're getting. Okay. We work at the middle school, and um, we really like, I think we're putting both plans together, but we were both talking about how just logistically we thought that the first plan you presented seemed really seamless and we liked that the way that the fifth graders could easily connect to the end of the B hall because that's where a lot of the seventh grade math teachers are. <coughs> we don't fifth graders only going to sixth grade hall where that, that A hall is now. Right. Um, we like the flexibility. We liked the first plan a lot. It seemed to kind of take a consideration that give them the access. We have a lot of kids that do advanced math. So yes. we've got fifth graders coming yeah. over to seventh grade, grade and in that way they just hall. you know walk up boom and they're not and it seems like the so as many as the eighth graders. Right, and the connector kind of space, like that lounge area, I like that it would be in the B hall as opposed to A, like it just is more central, it's easier for all of our kids okay. to access that okay. space. Um, one of the things that I had suggested during, after the first meeting or during one of the surveys was that there be a covered play area yes. space um, because, well, especially this last year, I mean, winter was just horrible, and I felt so sorry for the teachers, but the kids never got to go outside to yeah. play. And I think that you kind of have to get creative in being able to get them outside and having a covered area, especially in the heat, especially if we go to like June 7th, like we've done some years, um, they need that shaded space, they still need to be able to get outside. Um, is there any way that we could do a covered space with the other scheme? Yeah, I think either of these schemes lends itself to that. I mean, this obviously has a built-in one right here, but, you know, both for recess and for PE and stuff like that, you know, a lot of times you want that kind of located either right outside the cafeteria or right outside the right. gymnasium. Both of these schemes kind of lend itself, you know, you could easily see yourself doing like an extended canopy or something and maybe, you know, whether this is 
pervious pavers, but then like right here, you know, right outside here, you have kind of a, a, a more concrete area that has a cover over it, something like that. Either of these schemes can accommodate that pretty well. But we've had a lot of discussion about kind of recess areas and outdoor areas, and, and both for the elementary school, and then also one of the big, big feedback uh, parts that we got for the middle school was kind of improving that recess kind of courtyard area, and maybe providing some specific functions in there rather than just kind of how it is right now. And so, so that recess, you know, every kid goes there every day. It's kind of a pretty wild and active area. Um, so we're looking at kind of what goes on the ground, you know, different areas so that there are different things for those kids to do and things like that. But certainly, covered area, Texas, shade, 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 either from the rain, but even more importantly, from the sunlight. So if it's a hundred... And then it being muddy for... Yeah. But, but then we've done things where you do have like AstroTurf or some kind of synthetic turf or something like that in those high area ways so that you don't you know, potentially kind of create that mud and track that back in. So those are different things that we'll be looking at as kind of we get a little bit more detail about some of those opportunities. Well, Doug, aren't the playgrounds also covered? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a pretty so standard thing. Now. Like a, a solid. So yeah, you know how there's a cover on the kinder playground. Yeah, but they can't play under that during, in the rain. Like it's shaded, mm -hmm. but they can't. Yeah, I was mainly like, thinking for shade. So, so I, I was thinking like something like, like even, if, even if it's raining, they can still, they can still get outside, get outside yeah. and run off some energy. And, and we've we've definitely talked about that, and that's something that it, you know if you have a little area that's a basketball court side, or you know, a half court or something like that, where they have a little bit of that access to. But, but I think we are seeing more and more whether they're courtyard areas or outdoor areas like recess, where you're putting synthetic stuff in there to where. You know, even if it rained in the morning, you know, right now it would be a big mud pit or something like that. If it's synthetic, you've got drainage there, and then, you know, you got a nice downpour from, you know, 8 to 9 o'clock or something like that. But by, you know, 10 o'clock, we're able to kind of get out there and play and things like that. So just thinking about some of the materials and how you do that, kind of conversations that we're having to, to make sure they could be used as much as possible, kind of both in good times and bad times. <coughs> was the large room across from the uh, cafeteria in the first place? And was that was that an auditorium or was that it's the gym? Gym. The gym. It's the gym. So the gym is right here, yeah. and the cafeteria is right here. I think, I think the idea was is that you kind of have this connection point, and you know we kind of massage this a little bit. When you create something like a view like this, you want to make sure that that terminus of that view is a really interesting area. So. That would be a really nice design point, kind of right there. So of, the, you know, the gym's not typically available during lunch hours for the weather's implement. No, no, because no, because they have to eat at the same time, time all day long. So. Yeah, I guess I grew up in the Midwest, and it was common to do recess in the gym. When it yeah, was, it was. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. The the other plan. The first. The first plan. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem as congested as the mm -hmm. second plan. It seems I, I like to flow a lot better like than the first one. Yeah. I like the vibes better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd like to take both and kind of smush ideas from both of them into one. Mm -hmm. The Frankenstein is our that's, that's exactly how we that's, that's how we work in the design group is that you know it's like wow I really like this but man I really like this and so you look at something like this. This area came from a completely different scheme, this, this kind of idea right here. It came from a scheme during the first design session that that scheme didn't get chosen, but the idea about having this vertical kind of educational area as well as, as, well as a horizontal one, kind of it was something that kind of sparked some discussion. So it kind of circled back around where it makes sense to do this in here. And, and you could go into either of these schemes, and there's probably a conglomeration of two or three other schemes that got incorporated kind of in there. Uh, that overlook, that kind of second floor thing, there were two other schemes that kind of had something similar and it kind of converged on that scheme to kind of have that first floor open to the outside kind of thing and kind of the advantages of doing something like that. So that's, that's, that's why we try to present a lot of different options so that we're not just saying, hey, here's your solution right here, do you like it? We want to give you, you know, a bunch of stuff so that you can kind of have those conversations and pick and choose what you like and then as we kind of continue to gather that information and we get closer to something, again, that's unique to you guys. It's not a generic elementary school that was built for some other location. It's specifically built for you guys and this site, for these kids, and for these different teachers. This, to me, this plan has a better layout on the block 
on, on the, on the, the yeah. land layout. It yeah. yeah. seems to flow better and have just a better uh, mesh together with the and you know, with with both of these plans, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create outdoor rooms. Again, I'll say it a hundred more times: the outdoor spaces are just as important as the indoor spaces. And so, so what this team does is it kind of takes those outdoor spaces that have kind of been set up. I think there's Mike. I think we counted like ten or eleven of those different courtyards throughout the existing middle school. This kind of continues that path, whereas the other scheme kind of creates a different type of outdoor space. And so, it has some of the same function, but it kind of kind of quirks kind of what's existing right there and kind of creates a different type of outdoor space. So again, different ways of solving the same problem. There's not a right and a wrong. It's just kind of what works best for you guys or what you like better. Where were the playgrounds all that time? So I think the, let me get this right, the older playground for the older kids would be kind of outside the cafeteria area where it could be used during recess as well. Whereas the younger playground, we'd want to get that as close as possible to the kids who are going to use that. So that would be kind of more in this area right here where they can kind of directly go outside. <coughs> between basically the right? school but and not, the track. Yes, but not in between yeah. the, like not in between the wings, the pods. Ah, I see. So That's outside of the pods. Okay. So, so that we can do. Distracting. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also so that you can use the space in between the pods if you want to go outside and do some outside learning. Yeah. That way it's not a dedicated playground. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pushed a little bit further down and it's pushed outside of it. I like yeah. these pods. I like the entry of the other with the rotunda mm -hmm. and I like the way that FA and behavior kind of was its own pod. It was totally separate from yeah. the other. So, you know, it's, it's you know, one of the one of the things the middle school came up with was kind of we talked about outdoor classroom and things like that, sustainability and one of the thoughts so that was kind of, you know, can we do the entire building like with, with solar panels and things like that? But could we potentially do kind of an outdoor classroom where we put solar panels on the outdoor classroom and maybe that outdoor classroom is is kind of <coughs> energized by kind of those solar panels so that you almost kind of have a something that you can kind of take kids to and do educational things but also kind of showcases sustainability and some things like that so we're, you know again we take ideas and we're looking at all those things different opportunities to to do not only kind of educational functional things but things that make kids go wow that's so cool we really love that so. i think too this this plan, and don't get me wrong, I think the creating a sense of wonder is very important, but the other, just a lot of extra space that potentially could be classroom space for expansion, um, and just as a, um, just thinking financially. I'm more rather, functional like, than Functional, wow. like yeah. make it more functional, and this is like taking advantage, I guess. Of more of well, we, the number one goal from the teachers was that we have created a community here at this school at Walnut Springs. We've created a feel for the, the students and there's there's an atmosphere that's been created here. And so more than anything else, kind of taking what's been created here and not just the building, but that atmosphere and that feel, that was the number one thing from every group that we talked to. And so the idea with either of these schemes is that we want to kind of take that and move it over to the new site with us. So, you know, we haven't really got a lot to the architecture part of it yet, and kind of talking about materials and space and things like that, but but we know that, again, kind of we've got certain things that we tell ourselves over and over and over again. That's one of those things that we have to make sure that we keep what we love here and we carry that over to the new thing. I so, love that this is like, it's very warm and nurturing and like, it's, Easy for kids to get around. Mm -hmm. I'm a person as a parent. I mean, I'm on acreage out here, and it's because of the green space. I want my kid to have access to the outdoors. Mm -hmm. and this yeah. looks a lot more like a semi-rural uh, school setting where he has access to the indoors and the outdoors versus um, a more, I guess, suburban or urban school setting where you're stuck indoors. And it's yeah. a very controlled learning environment. I, I think that creativity and the access to the outdoors is important, especially for this community. And both for the elementary school and the middle school, there are such great programs to get those kids outside. And we want to make sure that we, again, you know, all we can do is, as the architects is hopefully provide those opportunities. It's obviously the teachers and the students who create all those things, but trying to make sure that those connection points and those opportunities are there to make it as easy as possible to kind of move those kids around and stuff. That's, you know, we're always trying to kind of look for ways to kind of Maximizing, like, functional outdoor spaces yeah. that are really important for the yeah. teachers. Absolutely. How far are these schools from the highway? It looks like the, the 
second version is a little bit closer. To yeah, second version is a little bit closer. It's still pretty significant. I think that second version gets about a third of the way into the Peabody field right there. Yeah, so there's still a, approximately. I don't have it. Yeah, I don't have it on top of my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. But it, it, it's a. It's I mean, behind the middle school. It's a John. Yeah, I almost like the, the first plan, but position where the second plan is better, so it kind of connects into the B hall down mm -hmm. at the bottom. We actually that at the very end of the conversation earlier today, we kind of said, "What if this was? What if this was kind of a piece that you can kind of start rotating?" Yeah. So we actually did kind of look at that and at the very end of our meeting earlier today. So reading our minds. <laughs> Any more questions? Can you talk about drainage a little bit with your site plan for uh, Schema A? You were talking about making the water go where it wants to go. And I am one of the people on Peabody who flooded in May, so well, you know, more concrete, more It'd be paper. very difficult to me to get the specifics right now okay. because our civil engineer is, what we typically do is we work through our tech fleet and the <coughs> city. That's usually when we bring our consultants on board. So. You know, obviously water's flowing that way, and you know, when we have courtyards like this, we make sure that we have kind of double or triple the amount of kind of drainage in those kind of protected areas that we know that we can't have water kind of build up there. So, so we would look at kind of all these different specific areas to make sure we're moving kind of that water away as quickly as possible, and then kind of getting those. A lot of that stuff is probably going to be underground, kind of just to make sure that we get it off the off the ground so that kids can use it, things like that, and then kind of push that to wherever it needs to go. I, don't, I can't really answer specifics right now because they haven't gotten involved, and I would love to say I'm an engineer, but I'm only an architect. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but they Just will use, sure well uh, planned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, they will use, I mean, we had reference earlier to, you know, rainfall data, and so yes. they use all yes. that. It has yeah. to be designed to, to manage those, you know, 25, 50, 100 year uh, flood events. And we always try to take a positive out of the negative. That's what my mom taught me. Um, and, you know, the rains that you have here have been just horrible. But the positive out of that is that we've seen some of those really, really bad situations. So we have, right now, as we're kind of moving forward with the design right now, we know how bad it can get. And so as we go in through here, we know that some of those we're going to adapt some of those things that that we need to adapt to make sure that we take care of those really significant extreme events as well. So, do um, we know what data they're using? Are they using the new Atlas 14 data? I believe I, and, and again, I'm I'm speaking above my knowledge level here, but but I, there's been a lot of new information right. over the last year or two years. Ago. And, and yeah. I'm sure like a rain increases by like third. All, all that all that stuff has changed over the last few yeah. years, and, and we're using. I just think it's really important that the school's a good neighbor. Yeah. It's not absolutely, out. absolutely, and, and we're required. I mean, you know, the, the the two things that we start right after this is, like I said, we get our consultants involved, kind of start making the plan of building. But the other thing is, we go to all the regulatory agencies that, whether it's accessibility, fire safety, you know, security, kind of all those kind of things that we have to meet. But we start that process right after schematic design, so that we can kind of give them a heads up on what we're trying to accomplish. But they can kind of give us a heads up on. <laughs> hey, really look at this particular thing right here, or we want you to kind of use this data or this kind of stuff right here. So we'll be doing that here in the next week or two, just to kind of get those conversations started. Would it be back to kind of parking and parents being separated? Is it possible, so to the right of that north rectangle, can we add in like an exit only? That way you have like two-way two -way traffic like coming in, so you have your parent drop off who want to keep the kids out the door. Go to, go to the other side. <laughs> no, 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 that's good too. I, what made me think of it was the parking lot of Plan B. Go to But I like the size of the parking lot of Plan B. I don't know whether this is what you're talking about, but we, we kind of talked about here is, is that could we have an exit here that, that limited the amount of stack space that would be on Peabody? Is there a way to exit Instead of exiting students back out here, yeah. could we think about stack space here, but then could we also think about stack space kind of going out this way to kind of separate those two? And that's one of the things that we looked at. You know, the idea would be you would certainly have some traffic kind of at that end of the day or in the morning kind of thing, but it would be limited to a certain amount. You know, you wouldn't have 
traffic stack back to here, you would have four or five or six cars kind of up here at the front, and you know cars. But you know, you know that that would kind of back up on, on into your camps again. So how, now you're not <coughs> looking at stack space to drop off. But stack space to kind of get out too. So that was one of the things that we're looking at. As well. well, that's why I mentioned it on the other one because the other one's much larger and it doesn't put traffic onto Peabody. But you still sure. have you have your people that are coming in who are dropping off out of the yeah. car. But you can also have a line like parallel to that coming in and actually parking in like a separate little inside loop, and then everybody would basically exit out of the same thing. That's not even yeah. so, Peabody. So we are looking at that, and, and again, there's still a lot of investigation work. You know, you, you, you continue to learn the site as you kind of move stuff around and things like that. So we're, we're not there yet, but, but we still are looking at that. And that was one of the things that, you know, is there a way to actually exit on to Peabody without impacting, you know, in a, in a horrible stance, you know, point from a, a traffic standpoint for the residents that live there. Well, and people that go to Walnut, there's going to be some that are going to need to go east, and there's some that are going to need to go west. Yeah. So, and you know, again, we're getting information from TxDOT on traffic lights and kind of if we do some of this stuff right here, we want to potentially modify kind of how that connection from Tiger Lane to 290 works and things like that. So we've already started those conversations with those groups and they've been really kind of good with getting back to us on that. So we'll continue to kind of talk to those agencies and, and figure out kind of what seems to make the most amount of sense. Last. All right, so where are we right now? So again, the two things, you know, as we move into design development, it will be having our consultant kickoff and our regulatory meetings and updates and things like that. Um, uh, now that we're kind of, we know where the school potentially could be, and here in the next week or so, we'll have kind of the scheme that we kind of move forward with. Now we can kind of start some of the middle school design renovation and kind of things like that, because we know kind of where things are connecting and stuff like that, so that gets kicked off. Um, again, we have two review meetings uh, in design development. Uh, this right here and number five, this is kind of at the end of design development. Um, we'll have a teacher open house. We talked to those 55 or so teachers here at this school. We talked to about uh, 12 or 14 teachers over the middle school. We're going to set up at both schools, kind of at 50% design development, where we have a little bit better worked out plan and site plan, and we'll sit down and any teacher who wants to come and talk to us, they can kind of come and talk to us and, you know, where's my room and how do I get from here to the gym or stuff like that. So we'll give all the teachers who kind of gave their time a, an ability to kind of come back and give us their feedback on the actual plan. And we'll do that a number of times throughout the process because we want to make sure that we're kind of staying on course for what they're expecting. Uh, we'll get to the end of 100% design development probably sometime in September or so. And then we'll come back and do the same thing here is that we'll we'll take to the board, we'll take to you guys, we'll have campus, you know, tomorrow we're going to meet with the leadership groups at, at, uh, at, at Walnut Springs, and we'll take it to both leadership groups kind of at both campuses at the end of uh, design development. So again, we want to make sure that we give everyone opportunities to kind of give us feedback, and, and I can't tell you how important this is to us is to get this feedback from you guys and to kind of hear your concerns and thoughts and things like that. It really kind of helps us drive down the path that, that makes the most sense for you. So we really uh, appreciate it and we will give you more opportunities to do it as we kind of move forward. So, so yeah. when will the parents know or the community know which scheme you are going to go with? Uh, again, we're, we've got a survey going out. Is it going to be like a Google yes. form? Is yes. Yeah, yeah Google form. Yes. I think we did that. We did that during programming. I think we gave about a week for parents and teachers and stuff to kind of do that. So we'll do that also. So sometime mid next week or so, we'll kind of end that up. So the hope would be is that we have a scheme sometime mid to late next week, and that will kind of be what we move forward. And the district will announce that via email. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. We haven't really kind of talked about that, but we'll we'll figure out a way to kind of make sure that everyone kind of gets an idea of which direction. And depending both on input fantastic. you're still getting, are y'all are still looking at maybe tweaking both of these yeah. schemes a little? This stuff gets tweaked until, okay. it'll be tweaked until okay. January. It, it, sure. it, the design part never stops, <laughs> even as we continue to document. But yes, I mean, <laughs> right. and, and what we're trying to do is we've got these four or five points of interaction and getting feedback. And what we'll do is we're going to take all those different four or five points and gather up what you guys said, what was said earlier today, what the survey says, what the teacher group tomorrow says. We're, we're, again, we're going to get pricing 
from the, the construction manager to kind of see if there is a big difference from that standpoint. So again, we take all of that information and usually it kind of leads you in one direction or another. So we'll kind of see how it goes here in the next week. I know that in the earlier days there was some discussion about kind of what a medium <coughs> and low price points per square foot, like what it gets you. So one of the things that we're immediately doing with both construction managers, for not just this school, but the one for elementary school number five over at Darden Hill, is that we're, we're reaching out to them this week and we're asking them to kind of put together kind of their last five or ten elementary schools that have been bid over the last couple of years to give us some really kind of boots on the ground feedback about where price points are. So we're, that'll probably take them about a week to do. So maybe not by the end of next week, but maybe that following week we're hoping to get some cost feedback on kind of where things are actually bidding out right now for elementary schools. Is all this going to be shared on DSISD's website somewhere? Or yeah, tomorrow the this will be up. We did a video for people who couldn't be here. So that will be there and then a link to the Google form. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is it. Thank you so much. Great questions. Great, great, great questions. Thank you so much. Yeah.